Hey guys, okay, so for this, I just kind of want to give a conceptual explanation for some dot and cross product uh, operations, specifically related to DL and DS, um, and kind of, I'm hoping that this might help you visualize some equations if you don't understand what's going on. Um, this might be limited, so this is totally optional. This is just in case you're interested. Uh, okay, so for the first part, I just kind of want to intro what the dot product essentially means. So say I have two vectors a and b and they're both in the same direction and there's no angle between them. In that case, this definition of the dot product a, b, cosine of theta um, is going to give me basically a multiplied by b, right? Uh, so the magnitude of both multiplied, which means that when I take the dot product, I'm just trying to find out how much of one vector, um, like what's their shared magnitude acting in the same direction and it's going to be multiplied. So we're multiplying the magnitude that's acting in the same direction. Uh, this is just sort of a little bit of a breakdown here to kind of help you guys visualize maybe a little bit. Um, so like just in this case, uh, y, this is true. So like if I have a dot b, I'm basically multiplying all my ax and bx components and then the ay and by components, right? Um, so I have like ax and bx because they're acting in the same direction, basically what I said uh, back here. And then because these guys are perpendicular, it's going to be zero. Um, because there's no magnitude acting in the same direction. So I know this is a pretty obvious review here, um, but I think that some people kind of sometimes like learn the math but miss some of the conceptual details. Okay, so when I have a line vector and I'm dotting it with a vector field or something like that, what, what does that mean? Why, like what information is that giving me? Well, um, when you pick a differential line, uh, it also has a direction, so when you're dotting that with another vector, you're trying to figure out how much of a mag the magnitude of a vector is acting in the direction of that differential line. So um, one really important thing to note, when you have this symbol here, that means that you have a closed loop contour. So if I have a closed loop contour, um, so this would be a closed loop, this is not a closed loop. And if you look at the pictures, you can see why. Uh, this DL element is is coming back in on itself where this is a straight line. So this is a loop, this is a line. Um, so this would be a closed loop contour, um, but like this, if this was my DL element and it was just curved, this would not be a closed loop contour. Okay, so just it comes back in on itself. Okay, so if I was just visualizing this and trying to understand um, my field behavior, so I have some vector field, right, flowing across this DL, um, along this direction, um, I would have a, um, the vector would be acting in the direction of, of DL. So I would have a contribution, right? For this a dot DL, I would have a value. Here it's perpendicular, so I would, I would basically have nothing. Um, here it'd be acting against DL, so this would kind of be a negative component, and then here would be nothing. So I would have one plus two plus three plus four for all of the sides, essentially, for this uh, a dot DL. So just kind of a uh, visual idea. This might help for looking at some of the B field stuff um, later, but okay. Um, then here, same idea with this a dot DL. If I have a, a vector right here and I'm breaking them up into like the X and Y components, I care how much of these vectors are just acting in this DL direction, okay? So that's what it's telling me spatially. Okay, what about surface vectors? Um, well, the surface vector is essentially just like the area of the surface multiply by a normal direction. So this this is hard to see here, but this is like, if you take the integral of ds, it's gonna give you a surface area, right? The DF is, ds is a differential surface, so if you're integrating it, you're, you're getting a surface area. Um, so what happens when I am dotting that, right, with, an, with a vector? I'm trying to find out, let me maybe look at uh, this guy. I'm trying to find out how much of the vector is coming through that surface. So how much of that vector is coming through the surface uh, normal to it, right? So if I have like, I don't know, so say this is like in the x direction, right? If that's my, just for example, this is ds x and x is the um, vector direction. And I have my a vector is equal to like ax and the x hat plus by and the y hat, right? Plus bz and the z hat. None of these terms are gonna be coming through the surface, right? It's just really this one, right? So this is gonna to contribute to the flux through the surface. So hopefully that makes sense there. So my surface flux would not be equal to zero. In this case, I think that these closed loops, or the closed surfaces uh, versus just a, a non-closed surface are really important for the um, B fields. 
the reason why is um, so magnetic field lines close in on themselves, right? So you have like a positive, right, and a negative uh, as you go around because they're going to cancel each other out. So if I take the integral of b dot ds and it's a closed surface, which would mean a whole, like this entire shape. So a um, you put your magnetic element inside of a surface and the, the surface will be closed off and all of the field lines out would be equal to the field lines coming back in and the total flux or change through that surface would be zero, always for a magnetic field. But if I don't have this closed loop contour here, this little circle, right, that means it's not closed off. So like that could be something like, this top square here, that would not be equal to zero because I'm only looking at this like sample surface up here. Okay, so hopefully that helps clarify a little bit. Um, then um, just some review here for the right hand rule. I, I feel like some of you guys have uh, trouble with cross products. So, okay, if I'm doing a cross product, just a review for the right hand rule, I wanna put my pinky on the first vector, sweep my hand to B, and then my thumb is in the direction the resulting direction of the cross product. So sometimes your hand might be upside down or in a weird direction, but again, pinky along the first vector, sweep your hand to the second. So first vector, sweep your hand to the second, and then your thumb will be along the direction of the resulting vector. Okay, so over here, I did that for some directional unit vectors. You're definitely gonna have to do this in some of the later chapter problems. So if this doesn't make sense to you, uh, please try to visualize why this is the way that it is. So for example, y cross x, so pinky along y, sweep your hands to z, notice that your thumb is pointing towards x, and you can try to visualize some of these on your own. Just make sure that that makes sense to you or you will be in big trouble. Okay, so this is a little bit of what I explained before from that b.ds, this is an equation in your book. So the closed loop contour is equal to zero, um, but there's also an equation in your book where it's not a closed surface and it's equal to the flux through the surface. So in that case, um, for this one that is not a closed loop, it would be, it would be something like this. Uh, your surface could really be anywhere, but you're just looking at a sample surface where your uh, magnetic field is coming through, um, but it's not closing back in on itself because you're not taking a closed surface. So there's no circle there. But in this case, when you're taking a closed surface, it's gonna be equal to zero. So the total flux is equal to zero because the flux going out is equal to the flux going in. So total is zero. Okay, for a B field. In the case of an E-field, that's not true uh, because your E-field lines radiate outward. So you will still have a net flux for an E dot DS. So for an E-field coming through a surface, dotted with a surface, it's not going to be equal to zero. Okay. So um, if you're asked a couple of things about field behavior, hopefully this um, maybe helps you look at the equations and understand a little bit more about what's going on spatially. I don't know if that will help, but um, I'm hoping that maybe it will. Okay, uh, and I just sort of drew some vector directions for reference here um, for the right-hand rule uh, for a B-field. If you see some questions like this where you're um, asked to identify if a B-field is behaving correctly, note that for a B-field, dot means out for the B-field. Um, and a good way to visualize that is like, so if you um, think of an arrow, right, the arrow is going to touch it first, so this means coming out of the page, and this X means going into the page. Okay, so dot coming out, x means going in. So if you're if you're given something like this, right, and you have a current going through a loop, um, you want to think about like if your right hand rule is true. Um, in this case, this would not be true. Uh, but if you did have a current, so the same thing, and it was going in, right? So think about how your fingers would wrap around. Um, maybe it would help to maybe draw these like along the wire. So if my current is going this way, right? This is my eye. Uh, and my fingers kind of are gonna dig into each of these um, these X's going in, then this would be true. So if you're just, if you face some questions like that and you're trying to visualize your magnetic field uh, behavior relative to a current.